preparing our hearts in prayer for worship, let us pray together the prayer that's written in the bulletin. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us sing together, Jesus Christ is risen today, hymn number 207, all the verses. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand 
that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Now let us all say the psalm together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. A reading from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, 
who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That's what Christians from time immemorial have said to greet one another on this beautiful Sunday morning. And I want you to say it over and over and over today, because this is the day that we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. And this morning, I have a treat for you. It happens to be a fact that in all of Western civilization, there has been more music classical music, contemporary music, popular music, there's been more music, more graphic arts, pieces of fine art, uh, even the graphic arts like in our comics. I've even seen a Genesis done by one of Mad Magazine's graphic artists. There have been more artistic works generated because of a faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and the belief in his resurrection from the dead as evidenced in the change in the hearts of the artists themselves. So this morning, your treat is to see. A picture is worth a thousand words, and we don't have a thousand pictures, but we have enough for many, many words. So I want you to enjoy this next presentation, the beautiful organ music of Marilyn Music will underline beautiful scenes, artworks from the pages of history of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Enjoy.
And now let us pray. Holy One, we thank you that you, in your absolute love for your creation, were not content to stay apart from us. But when we couldn't really hear you, we couldn't really know you, we failed to understand you, you came into our midst as one of our own. You walked among us and talked and taught us what you expected from us, what you know would fulfill us and give us joy in our lives and peaceful rest with you at the end. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and we are so grateful. We ask you then to let us bask in the joy of the Lord today and many days to come, remembering how much you love us. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I would like you to turn to our uh, bulletins, to the Nicene Creed, and let us say this creed together. We trust in one God, the Creator, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We trust in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten eternally of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We trust in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Creator God, you made each of us in love and for love. In baptism, we were anointed members of the body of Christ and called to live holy lives and to participate in the mission of justice and mercy. Grant to us the grace to be attentive to your call, to be sensitive to injustice whenever we encounter it, and in all things to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are weak, limited, and inclined to turn away from you, Lord. We fail to acknowledge the inherent worth of each person as a child of God. We focus on what divides us and makes us different rather than on the great truth that unites us, that we are one body in Christ. We ask for your grace to enable us to appreciate the beauty of our diversity and to celebrate the gift of God incarnate in each one we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, you made us to live in harmony and community not in chaos and violence. So much of our world is torn by strife. There are many divisions among us that result in a lack of freedom for all. Give us the grace and strength to be instruments of peace in our hearts, in our homes, communities, nations, 
and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus said we must each be willing to take up our own cross if we are to follow where Christ leads. In carrying our crosses, we participate in Christ and in the burdens of our fellow human beings. God of the oppressed and suffering, we pray for all those who suffer in any way. Grant us the strength and compassion to carry our burdens and those of our fellow human beings, and the grace and peace to know our losses, grief, and pain as part of the mystery of our salvation and your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The lives of your saints stand as a reminder of what it means to belong to God, to be persecuted for justice's sake, to live and die for God and for God's people. Thank you, most compassionate Holy One, for the lives of holy and prophetic leaders of our time. We ask that we can become in our various ministries of serving others the living presence of your Son and our brother, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring these needs and all our own needs and the needs of our families and communities to your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your grace, Jesus endured the cross, seeing the joy that was awaiting him. Give us your grace, but also eyes to see those things that you have prepared for those who love you. May we be emboldened to courageously live that life that Jesus calls us to live, without fear, full of faith, and make our lives count for your kingdom here and eternally in the life to come. To the glory of God, the Holy Trinity. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Take time to collect your offering so that we might bless it together. Please listen to the words of our offertory anthem.
I'd like you to lift up the offering that you have in your hands and let us pray together for God's blessing. Lord, we thank you that everything we have, you have given us. Everything we need, you provide. And we only give back a portion of what you have asked and what you have given. We ask you to bless what we are able to give today. It may be a great deal, or it may be really hard to be able to give anything. But it doesn't matter how much we give. The widow's might was greater than all the money that the wealthy had put in the, mit the mitre's box. So we ask you to bless this. Bless everything we offer to you. Multiply it like you multiplied the loaves and fishes. And anoint this offering to go into the world and serve people in the name of God. We thank you for your abundance. You are a God of a generous heart. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless now these gifts we bring. Amen. And now, once again, we will have a prayer for a spiritual communion. As I said last night at the vigil, we could have communion here. We have enough people to have communion. You're just not ever supposed to take it by yourself. It's a community thing. It's a meal we feast together. But we will remain in solidarity with everyone who's at home and receive a spiritual communion together. So let us prepare our hearts to receive the filling of the life of God. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. They that abide in me and I in them, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Let us pray. In union and unity, dear Lord, with the faithful who are at every altar of your church today, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, we desire to offer to you our praise and thanksgiving. We believe that you are truly present in this moment. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we implore you, to come spiritually into our beings, into our heart of hearts. We unite ourselves to you and embrace you with all the affections of our souls. May we never be separated from you. Come, Lord Jesus. Dwell in your servants, in the fullness of your strength, in the perfection of your ways, and in the holiness of your spirit and rule over every hostile power in the might of your spirit and to the glory of the Father. Amen. Amen. And now may the blood, body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you within you and among you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.